Friends, we begin today in our Lord's name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive only ourselves. In the truth, it is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause to meditate together on our need for God's grace. Let us then together confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, he forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows in us his Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in each of us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Friends, the Lord be with you. O Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people, that we who justly suffer the consequences of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Friends, you may be seated as we hear our Lord's word together. Good morning. Good morning. morning. The first reading this morning is from Jeremiah chapter 17. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. For he will be like a bush in the wastelands, 
He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. He does not fear when he comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you when you received which you received, and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to the, all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what we believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Friends, we rise together to sing the Alleluia verse and to hear the Holy Gospel. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose twelve of them, whom he also designated apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon who was called the Zealot, Judas son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He went with them and stood on a level place, a large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to him to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cursed, and the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. Friends, this is the gospel of the Lord. Together as church in this place, together with church of all space and time, we go to our Lord confessing his work for us. We do so today in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and us send it to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends, you may be seated as we again raise our voices in praise, singing hymn 705, The Man is Ever Blessed. Mercy and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord, and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for this morning is our second lesson from 1 Corinthians 15, but it's Paul's story. Join me in reading these words from that lesson. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. You may be seated. A number of years back, when I was a pastor in the Milwaukee, north of Milwaukee area. I heard a story of a group of German immigrants that moved to this country. They came with their whole families to start a new life. It was in the middle 1800s. And what was interesting is they came through Ellis Island and then they migrated to Milwaukee. They settled there as farmers, starting first with cows and then crops, and then into business as it progressed. One family's name was Schmidt. The particular individual, Christian. He came to the Milwaukee area and he thought right away one of the things 
that I've seen in my life is how God blessed us, him and his whole family. He joined a, a German Lutheran church, because that's what Germans do. And he wanted to be a blessing. So with a group of fellow members, they started a group called the Martins Club. Now, I heard about it almost 125 years later. Their goal was to start Lutheran churches in the Milwaukee area. Churches that had schools. So kids could grow up hearing about Jesus. Churches for them to be a part of. Named after Martin Luther. And what was interesting is when I started digging in a little more, this man, Christian, stood out. I don't even know if you ever heard of the Martins Club. But it's predominant in the Milwaukee area. And what's interesting is no one will remember Christian's name. But a lot of people I think are in heaven because of him and his efforts. His friends. You know, so those words, that idea got me thinking. Christian's life made a difference. So, how about yours? Have you ever thought about it? What impact has your life had on others? You know, I don't just mean being a good provider, a house, taking care of the kids and the grandkids, but I mean on a bigger scale, making a difference. You know, we can look at that for us as Bethlehem. What difference are we making in our community? You know, journey to Bethlehem, telling the story of Christ. And we're doing it again in December. But also cross. Starting out. And I just heard yesterday that they had to buy more chairs. A hundred more chairs. Because they ran out with 120. And now, another mission. Fall River, Columbus. But, you know, you see the ones in the bulletin also. The Dominican Republic and Kenya and Africa and Indonesia and the Pacific. Making a difference. So the question comes in. How are we a part of it? What's my story in relation all of those. You know, and that's kind of the question we think about. Making a difference. Are we? Can we? You know, and that's the point. That's the point of our text. You know, it comes back to those words of Paul from 1 Corinthians 15 with a kind of simple point to it. Bloom where you're planted. We don't have to go around the world. We don't have to be missionaries. We don't have to, to move to other cities or other parts of even our country. Make a difference right here. And that's where it starts. That was Paul's story. He starts out with those verses we read. For I am the least of the apostles. And do not deserve to be an apostle because I persecuted the church. That's where Paul starts out. He said, you know where I started? I was like, super Jew. I was a Pharisee. 
I hunted down Christians, brought them in to be executed. And then Jesus stepped into my life, appeared to me on the road to Damascus, struck me blind for three days. He got my attention. And then everything changed. It wasn't me, but what God did to me or through me. He went on to describe his sufferings, his struggles. He said, five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. In other words, 39 lashes. If you went over 40, you probably killed the person. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. You know, that's quite a laundry list. I got nothing when you compare it to that list. And I bet you too. And then he goes on and then... There was given to me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, a health issue, and he says three times I prayed that God would remove it, but he didn't. So in other words, what he's saying is this was a struggle my whole life. But you know what? What Satan uses to shake us up, what Satan uses to rattle our faith, what Satan uses to cause us to say, God, why are you punishing me? God says, no, I got you. I'm going to take care of you through it all. And let me take care of you. He goes on. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. You know, Paul is retelling the whole story of Jesus. He said, this is what it's all about. It's all about Jesus. He came into this world as the Messiah. He died on a cross for our sins. He rose again on the third day like no one in the history of the world. Have you ever heard stories of people rising from the dead? Have you ever heard stories of people healing again and again? Visible, provable illnesses? Jesus did. And he said, this is the guy I believe in. This is the guy that turned my life upside down. And that's the key. And then he goes on, and last of all, he appeared to me. I didn't deserve it, but he picked me. He got my attention, he changed my life, and then everything happened. And though I don't deserve to be an apostle, I don't deserve to share this message, but yet, you know what? That's what God did. He put me in that spot. He changed my life at that moment. You know, and that's the point for us. You know, maybe it happened when we were a little baby and we were baptized. We look back at our life. You know, I grew up in a Christian home. I had Christian parents. It was good. Maybe we didn't have a big dramatic moment like Paul. You don't need one. But it's what you do with what you got. The bloom where you're planted. Your story. And that's you know, what's interesting is us looking back at, like, for example, Christian Schmidt's life and the impact it had. If you ever drive to Milwaukee, almost every street corner has a church and a school on it. And he was a part of starting it. Interesting. An ordinary, poorly educated Immigrant, dairy farmer, farmer, and then businessman. You know, and Paul, his story, he changed the world. He had three missionary journeys that spanned the whole Mediterranean Sea. 
going to all different cities and starting churches. He wrote 16 books of the New Testament. And those are the ones we read. Those are the ones that are our Bible today. Sharing the message of Jesus. You know, and that's the key. He wrote them to change the history of the world that followed. And we sit here now, 2,000 years later, and worship that Lord. Who died on a cross to save us from our sins. And that's the key. That's what Paul is saying. And that was his story. So here's the question. What's your story? You may say, well, I'm old. But you know, your story's never done. It's never done till you're gone. And because you're sitting here, you're not gone yet. So, chance is there to make a difference. You know what's interesting in our gospel lesson? We find Jesus calling his disciples. It says in Luke 6, on one of those days Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray. He spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him. There would have been a large group, perhaps even about 100 people. He chose 12 of them whom he designated his apostles, his disciples. You know, and what's interesting is if you look at the list of those people, they were listed in the bulletin that Pastor read or in the reading. You had disciples like John, James, Peter, Matthew, and Andrew. Four of those five fishermen. Poorly educated. So let me ask you something. If you were looking for speakers, motivational, people to build the faith, to share Christianity, would you pick poorly educated fishermen? Would you pick the one John on the end who's the kid? Peter, the guy in the middle who's the hothead? Would those be the guys you choose? I wouldn't. And then you go to the rest. James and Bartholomew, Thomas. Thomas, the guy who doubted. Judas, the guy on the end who betrayed him. Look at how the cartoon picture portrays him. This is from the little children's Bible. He's got his arms folded. He's got this look on his face. His eyes shifted like he's really ticked. Why did he choose him? You know, and all the rest. You know, and so ultimately it causes us to ask that question. Why? Me? And what difference can I make? What's my story? You know, and that's the thing to consider. The challenge for us. You know, we have our own story. None of us are missionaries. None of us will be remembered after we're dead, other than maybe by our family. But maybe, I think I just hit that. You gotta be careful where you put your elbow. But we can make a difference. You know, Christ chose us to share that message just like Paul. And in a way, just like Christian. We're probably more like Christian than Paul. But you know, we're here. And that's our part. You know, and that's our challenge. You know, COVID, we refer to it as the blight of 20 and 21.
But it's also an opportunity. An opportunity to share. It's kind of funny when you think about it. People told me a year ago they thought about what would happen if they died of COVID. And so I asked, what'd you come up with? You know, and the point comes in, we're not done yet. We have opportunities every day to make a difference. So let me come back with this question. What's your story? And let me ask. How are you going to be a part of ending it for Jesus? Amen. We rise to sing. At this time, we continue our worship with the gathering of our gifts and offerings. Friends, you may be seated as we do this. As the offering plates go back and forth, this is a wonderful time to fill up the fellowship books if you haven't done that yet today, or to offer up prayers for those around you in your life. We go to our Lord, bringing our gifts. As the offering comes forward, I invite the little ones to come forward also for a children's message. But today, I'm going to have you guys sit up on the wood. So come on up, kids. I'll see you guys up here, and we'll bring our offering up to our Lord. Lord, thank you for all that you give us in this life, for the blessings you've entrusted to us. Help us be good stewards of all you've given us. Amen. One of the gifts God has given us is family and kiddos. Kids, could you guys sit up in the wood? So that way you could, I'll stand up here today. We'll switch spots, because I'll move around a little bit. Oh, you got some money about to pop out, bud. You might want to tuck that down. You don't want people to know you're going around with that much cash on you. This is a, whoo. So, friends. You may know what's going on this afternoon. There's a big football game, right? And what do you think both teams want to do? They probably want to win, right? Can both teams win today? No. And you know, honestly, aside from some people who like little things like the names and stats and numbers of people, at the end of the day, it's a game. Yeah, some people will become famous for it or infamous. Some people will do really well and they'll get a little bit more money. But you know what? All that stuff doesn't last. Did you hear pastor he was preaching? He was preaching about Paul. And I wrote down a little note when I was hearing pastor preach. Paul was given his life because Jesus gave his life for Paul. Did Paul need to worry about winning in life? Did he need to worry about making a bunch of money and being really famous? No. Because who already thought he was a winner? Who already thought he was important? Who? Jesus. And when God looks at you and says, you are important, you I want on my team, I love you, and I want you to play on the field of this life with me, what do you say? But yes. And then, does Paul need to worry about winning, being famous, being powerful? No, because it doesn't matter. What matters is how you play the game, how you live the life. My dad used to coach all the time. 
and he'd drive me a little because he'd say to us all the time, we're trying to win, right? And he'd say to the team, it's not whether you win or lose, but how you play the game. And that would make me so frustrated because you know what I wanted to do? Win the game! But at the end of the day, what it, you want to work hard, you want to practice hard, you want to do well, and if you win, great. But at the end of the day, it's still fun just to be out there living. Paul knows it's fun to be out there living. Yeah. <gasps> that's fantastic. It's also fun to be trying. And I think that's important for us. Our job as Christians, yeah, is to be trying. We hear what Jesus did for us and that we know we're winners for Jesus. So it's how we play the game. It's how we live our life. It's how we treat our friends. It's how we listen to our teachers. Because God already says, I love you. I want you on my team. So let's pray that God would help us. Isn't that cool? God already says you're a winner. And he even helps us to live life, to play the game, to help others. So can we pray to God together? Let's take our hands and we'll lock them up. We'll go, dear God, thanking you for making me a winner in Jesus. Thank you for making me a winner in Jesus. You want eternity for me. You want eternity for me. Help me to live as your child on your team. Amen. I tell you what, when Jesus put water on you in baptism and he said you're mine, he already gives you the crown. He gives you the winning. So can we have fun today? Sure. But we always keep focused the main thing. That's loving Jesus, being loved by Jesus, and loving all of the people around us, like Jesus. Can I give you guys some knuckles on the way back? All right, I'll give you some knuckles on the way back. All right, good job, guys. I'll send you back to your Pope. If you stay up here too long, I'll put you to work. <laughs> we got a couple wax drops on the floor. I'll get you little scrapers. We'll take care of that. Oh, I tell you, what a beautiful day to have a little ones up front because sometimes as adults, we forget. <laughs> We're to enjoy the life our Lord has given us. And kids do a wonderful job of reminding us. Friends, would you rise with us together as we pray the prayers of the church this morning? Lord God, we thank you for the gift of making us a family in Christ, making us a church a congregation centered around your word. Thank you for the gift of the witness of Paul's life, a life that you chose and redeemed and washed. Three times you forgave him. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, and you sent him out. You forgive us, your church, here in this place. Send us out, that we may share the story of Christ in our lives, in the experience we enjoy, because your gospel has had an effect on each of us. So help us bear witness to this gospel revelation in our lives. We pray for those in need of recovery, for those who are in the hospital recovering. We pray for Kathy and Barb. Lord, lift up our sisters in healing. We pray for all of our community who are homebound members. This day especially, we pray for Audrey Bach. Lord, be with her and all of our homebound members. Let them know that you love them and so do we. There are many going through long-term illnesses, such as cancer. Lord, bear with them. Be with them. Encourage those around them to be their support. We pray for Amy, Ace, Don, Genevieve, Wendy, and Charlie. Lord, be with them. Strengthen them and their support team around them. Lord, you bless us with so many things. For the gift of life, for the gift of being part of your church. We thank you this day for milestone anniversaries, for Bruce and Bernie Hansen celebrating 55 years of marriage. Lord, use all of our marriages to be a picture of you and your church, a place of holy union together. Lord, we pray for those who protect us, those who keep us out of harm's way, the police force, the firefighters, the EMS workers, those who serve us and protect us in the military. And this day, we also lift up all those who help rescue people from harm's way. For the counselors and social workers that help bring people back together and find hope in this life. This day, we pray for our young ones who are out serving in the military. We pray for Jacob, John, 
John, Mike, Tarak, Josh, Brittany, and Eric. Lord, thank you for the gifts of this life. We thank you for Amanda's 35th birthday. Thank you for this blessing of life. We thank you for Steve and Linda Seward as their daughter celebrates her 17th birthday. Lord, give us all one more day to serve you, one more moment to be your church, to come to you in prayer and praise and receive the gift of life in and through Jesus. And God, in this life, help us to focus on you and pray the prayer you've given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you watch the game today, inevitably someone will get knocked down. And Lord willing, there'll be someone there, maybe even on the other team, to reach an out, extend a hand, and lift them up. You could just watch them and go, that's nice. Or you could take a moment with the young ones there and go, look, it's bigger than a game. It's how we live our lives. And we pray that God will give us all grace to live our lives showing Christ-like love. Friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his almighty peace. Amen. You may be seated as we go once more in song singing, You Are the Way Through You Alone, hymn 526.